All right, we're back. Another show this week. Uh, Anea and Joe are both here. Anea, how are hey, you? Hey, I'm great. You came straight from the workout. I did. I'm a little sweaty. There you are. You said, Ew. if I, no, you're not sweaty, but you did say to me, <laughs> hey, if we, if we do the show, um, I'm going to come straight from the gym and I may smell. And I'm like, well, how do I answer that? Do I say, don't like take a shower? No, you say no worries. Yeah, no worries. Did I say yeah, no worries? Just stay at least three feet away yeah. from me. You know, what's even weirder is that, um, when you said that, we have a shower here, and I was like, well, you can take a shower. And I was like, all right, the show will be over if I say that to her. Her husband will be over here like, what is with this guy? Um, this past weekend, uh, I thought of you this weekend because we had talked about this before when um, I see kids and families, and you and I were talking about it in L.A. especially, yep. with their son or daughter. And I'm talking like kids are young, five and six, mm-hmm. and they have like a Clash t-shirt Or another band like, you know, uh, Foo Fighters or Black Flag or something, you know, just like in you and you, you know, in your mind, you're like, oh, you know, there's no way that that five year old is really into Black Flag or or is really into Mm ACDC. And obviously with, you know, the way culture is, uh, subculture is the main culture now. So all those things are everywhere. And you can get your Ramones Mm T-shirt at H&M. But, you know, (laughs) plug for H&M. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought the Ramones are, they're, they're either rolling over in their graves right now, happy with cash or they're, they can't believe it. Uh, the thing that comes to my mind is I sometimes feel like as parents, are we making like mini me's of ourselves and I'm fully guilty of it. I've taken my kid, like I'm taking my son to see ACDC at Dodger stadium, September nice, 28th. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I, I've realized he's not going because he likes the band. He's going because I'm so excited Yeah, and I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, uh, I have photos of them in the Ramones t-shirts when they were little <laughs> Ramones onesies, <laughs> like literally like my wife do. would be like every photo of our kids. They're wearing a Ramones t-shirt. <laughs> okay. As they've grown, obviously I let go of that, but I do feel that kind of today's show topic would be raising our kids to not to be little versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Is there even a, a term for that? Like I said, mini me yeah. syndrome. No, I know <laughs> you're, you're talking about the e- e- big ego parenting, really. And and I, as I said to you when we talked about this, I think one of the first rules of parenting has to be to check your ego at the door. That's it. Then go from there, which is not an easy thing to do. It's not because my ego, there isn't a, there sometimes isn't a big enough area for me to this check it at the door. This room's a little small. Yeah. <laughs> The ego checking at the door. So parenting without ego. Mm-hmm. And I've heard of that before. Yep. I, I'm aware of that. I think you have to just do a lot of things without ego. Ego to For me. For sure. The, all the times I've gotten into trouble the most yep. with either relationships or, you know, just things with my wife or mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. have been ego. Yep. Because it's ego driven. Mm-hmm. Probably the only other thing is like tequila. That'll be the that'll be yeah. That's the second one. (laughs) Ego and tequila. And you don't want to mix ego and tequila together. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is, go extend on that. Okay. So so when we allow our ego to be too much a part of of our parenting, we start taking things very personally when our children make decisions of their own. We um start expecting and limiting their options and their ability to figure out who they are as individuals in the world because we are giving them a very narrow set of like here's what you can and can't be based on what I like and I don't like because that's what that's that's the real deal um, and it it I think our goal as parents has to be to give our children safe guidelines we have to keep them safe we want to get them you know to adulthood but we have to give them room to figure out who they are within those guidelines. And that means exposing them to many different possibilities in the world, different kinds of music, different activities, different sports, whatever. But then watching and seeing what they really dig, what they're doing because they think we want them to do, and what they're like, I just don't want anything to do with this. It's really cool you like it, Dad, but not my thing. Yeah. And that's where I think, I know just being a dad, I find myself, um, like if I'm driving with my daughter in the car, pop music you know here in LA we've got Kiss FM and and, and there's so many you know you know so many songs and, and their jams and you know sometimes the lyrics aren't appropriate mm-hmm. and that's where I will step in and say mm-hmm. hey you know what uh you, these lyrics the way they're describing women the way this guy's talking about women mm-hmm. I'm not having it and these are the, I always say these nice are the examples why. are you just saying that because I'm here no I'm not oh, cool. no no seriously I'm, I'm not I that that's just so out of touch, mm-hmm. you know, and and sometimes I see these young girls singing along to these songs where they're literally singing about lyrics 
that are hurtful to them to as them. women. Yes. So is yes. that okay when I step in and say, Absolutely. not in this Prius, yep. we're not doing that? Yeah, and, and, and again, look, I don't think any no should just be a flat out no. There's certainly like no's in an urgent situation that you just mean like it's no and we'll discuss it later because their safety is at stake. But generally, I think no's have to be followed up by a conversation. And here's why. Because it should be a teachable moment. When we put rules in place just for the sake of rules, our kids are ultimately going to find the first chance that they get to, to, to do it because now it's become this taboo thing. If they understand why you're concerned, why it might be to their own detriment, uh, why it's um, – I, the thing I love with, with media, with kids, the greatest way to get to adolescence because there is such – in that, that mode of like nobody's going to tell me what to do is if you talk about how the media is manipulating them to, to see themselves in a really narrow light, they'll respond to that, be like, oh, forget that. So conversation behind the no always. Okay, but the, but you it is, and I I've I've learned this that what I can't do is is and I see parents do this all the time is you know I have you know obviously the age I'm at the guys I grew up with are listening to you know whether it's ACDC or Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. and then you know they're dads and they're like they're like oh, man I'm not listening to this crap in my car and mm. and then they're I, you know I wonder. That that's hurtful to the kid, right? Because then it's a great point. Because exactly, so we shame. Look, shame is always like again. I could just list of rules. Don't shame your kids ever because it's so damaging to have one of the two people in the world that's most important to them be saying you doing this makes you less than. Never, 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 never. Again, engage in a conversation and make it clear to them where a shaming comment diminishes them, a conversation about how their well-being matters to you, and here's how this is not in the interest of their well-being, has a completely opposite effect. They can go, wow, you know what? I might not agree with dad or might not agree with no, mom, that but makes sense. clearly they, they care. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think sometimes maybe we get shaming confused with... I'm going to tell you the way it is mm-hmm. where, where you got to be careful with that. Right. Or this is just so awful. Like, we, yeah, we yeah. really have to be careful. So maybe maybe the lesson, at least, I, and I know we're touching a lot on music right now only because that's such a huge part of my life. And I think it's everyone's part mm-hmm. of life. You know, you mm-hmm. spend so much time in your car with your kids. And mm-hmm. you, and, but I know that some parents are, are fine with what whatever their kids are listening to. Um, and it's not such an intricate part of who they are. So maybe we go into this thing um, because I know this is a huge part of everyone's life is sports. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you have the father that played the football and then you have the fa- the football you have the father that played baseball basketball right. they were this huge athlete and they're gonna have yep. their son or daughter be such an athlete how do we you know mini me version again totally how do we handle how do you go down that road you know again it's okay so I, and i think that i i think we can all recognize really quickly when somebody is really jiving with something like something speaking to their heart they're they're in sync with it and it's not always that they have to be immediately really good at it but they are expressing a desire to keep going back for more as opposed to oh my gosh if i have to i really don't want to play soccer i really don't want to play football whatever and our inability to go okay you know what it's okay if my son doesn't want to play football can i interrupt really quick yeah, totally. okay you see how i put my hand up i like that what if you have a son or daughter mm-hmm. that is playing a sport, maybe an instrument, and they are good at it. Mm, mm-hmm. They and I, I hate that word gift, which we got to do a whole show to. Mm, about- if I hear another parent tell me that their kid's gifted, because <laughs> I just say straight up, my kids aren't like they're just kids, man. <laughs> And I know I'm not gifted. Yeah. My but wife... even, even the gifted comments are, that's ego. Yeah, it's yeah. straight okay. ego. All right. Can we do a show on that though? Yes, please. All right. If you guys want us to do a show on that, let us know. Uh, what I was going to say was, if your child though is mm-hmm. the soccer player that's really good, mm-hmm. you know, and we see these kids mm-hmm. or really good at say uh, playing music mm-hmm. how, and then they say, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. How do you handle that? Because I feel like with my own parents as a kid growing up, I wish... That it would have been pushed a little bit more. Yep. You know, since I was a little kid, I was doing magic shows when I was when I was seven years old. You know, I was yep. I, that was my whole thing. Yep. And I and I don't I don't know if I wanted them to push me into being a magician. Maybe I should thank them because <laughs> because I'd have silk pants on right now. <laughs> but yeah, thanks mom and dad for not pushing me in that direction. But you understand what I'm saying? I how do. do you, how do you balance that? I do. So I think that you know decisions about what our kids you know like and don't like what they what activities they should participate in it has to be a process so you know with my daughter you know my big thing and it was a really big test for me is when my older daughter came home and told me she wanted to be a cheerleader when I first moved from Canada where cheerleading is not a big thing I literally was at a big high school event and I said to the colleague next to me when my daughter was one 
if my daughter ever wants to become a cheerleader or we're moving back to Canada. And Okay, I gotta okay. stop you. So right there, <laughs> saying yeah. your daughter says, I wanna be a cheerleader, yep. something I can just the way you're yep. talking right now, I wish you everyone could it. see this. Your face got scrunchy mm-hmm. and cheerleader, that's a <laughs> that's, that's a, a trigger for you. Yeah, for sure. So how did you handle okay. that? So it was a big test for me to walk my talk. And so the way that, you know, first first of all, as I always say, I had a conversation with her. What is it about cheerleading that you're drawn to? What? Why do you want to be a part of it? And so initially, you know, it was kind of that, hmm, I don't know, like I just kind of like some of my friends are doing it. I think it would be fun, like sort of these broad answers. So then we started to explore it more together. And ultimately, there were two things that led me to agree to the cheerleading thing. One, she continued to come back for the next few days saying, oh, and there's this, and there's camaraderie among the girls. It's going to be a great, it's truly an, a, a sport. I'm, it's going to be an opportunity for me to be athletic. Then her coach, but the potential coach, came to me one night when I was at the school and said, you know, Ms. Bogue, we're all about the scholar athlete, and these girls will have to maintain a certain GPA in order to stay part of the team. I was like, okay. Good to go. They're treating it more like a sport opposed to just pom poms in the air. A- and and this particular school cheered not only for the boys teams but for the girls teams, which was a really big deal to me because it was important to me that she not see herself just as somebody on the sidelines, but that she was participating in something. And she so, was a part of the win. If the team wins, exactly. they're all celebrating together. And there needed to be a really a certain consciousness around that. Now she also was a soccer player, and a really good soccer player. So the ultimate deal was, as long as you continue to play soccer. You can do cheerleading. And so that way I kept her as part of this thing that I knew she was good at, that I knew was I'm, I'm all about girls soccer because I love the girls having the opportunity to uh, believe in each other, to trust each other, to have each other's backs because there's so little of it out in their day to day experience. And then she was going to have this cheerleading experience. And it worked out beautifully. And I think if you talk to her today now that she's an adult, she would say that she gets she got all the lessons and the value of approaching it that way. I love that. So man, that was a real challenge it, for you. Let me not easy. Like I'm able to, you know, I'm still getting a scrunchy face as you said, but it was not easy. It was a big test for me and I think that those tests are important for us to really see what we're made of as parents. And it's important that, you know, I always say from the time that, you know, she's in the womb, listen to shows like this, you know, do the reading, do the, so that when you're when you come up against this, you have some clue about who you want to be as a parent and what your guidelines and and your goals are going to be. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the reason why you and I started doing this because it's just a place for people to listen to and and like we like I always say I you're the expert and a parent and a parent it's but not the thing easy. is though man just in that story right mm-hmm. there you literally had to like you say walk the walk that's right you know? and as being a father I feel I'm learning every single day and 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 even the experience that you went through I feel like those experiences I have almost daily, Mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, whether it's even the type of education that my daughter wanted, Mm -hmm. you know, the all girls Mm -hmm. Catholic school, Mm -hmm. the furthest thing from what I wanted her to do. (laughs) I mean, I went to Catholic, you know, school and I, I, while I was there in eighth grade, I hadn't even had sex yet. And I was like, when I have a kid, they will not be going to a Catholic school. Like I had like that was my thing. It was like a thing of mine. Like they will not do it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have a, uh, uh, your children, just want to do something that's so different than what you yep. imagine them mm-hmm. doing, uh, whether it's sports, whether it's the way they dress. And it's really for me, now that you're saying that, that ego can really dictate, my own personal ego can dictate um, and get me into trouble, I mm-hmm. think, if you, do, like you said, don't check it at the door. Yep. And and I'm wondering, I'm wondering though, you know, how do we walk the line of, Still being able to like with my son and I like we watch a lot of movies together and Mm -hmm. I feel I've really pushed him down the like the line of like I feel like really great movies like Mm -hmm. Cool Hand Luke or you know Broadway Danny Rose and you know just like and I do not know these movies yeah these are all like Woody Allen's movie Broadway Danny Rose like that's like a movie that 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 I turned him on to recently uh great film too that's just awesome it's about a uh, an agent that represents all these really bad acts mm-hmm. and how he's a manager mm-hmm. uh or you know cool hand luke you know uh that 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 film a lot of the films that my dad turned me on to mm-hmm. but then i will still sit there and watch um all his adam sandler movies with him <laughs> which is that, is that hard for you um not not as hard for me as it is for my wife because ah. she's and I want to do a show, um, 
and I know we're running out of time right now. I want to I want to do a show. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think about this, because in a lot of those films, the way women are portrayed mm -hmm. and the way mm -hmm. men are portrayed to being towards women, mm -hmm. I've had to say like I've had the pause button and go, hey buddy, mm -hmm. that right there. That's not the way yes. a man should look at a woman. So great. You know? So great. No, and to me, that and, I, and is... that's just me, you know, and that's not because my wife comes in and says, Hey, you know, I don't know why I gave her that. You're gonna voice. take full credit for this. No, no, I'm, I'm not gonna take full credit. <laughs> I, you know what? I am gonna take full credit. Yeah, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I can say No, that. exactly. And I think that what's beautiful about that is is because what we're not saying here is 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 restriction. Like just things that are But I'm still turning him on to things, but yes. I'm also letting him and honestly, I don't really think that your son, I, I'm, I'm going to just go out on a limb here and, and say that if you're, if every time you brought up, oh, you know, hey, you want to watch one of those Woody Allen movies? And he was like, oh, God, dad, really? That you probably wouldn't push him. No. You know, and, and, and I it's do right push there. in the sense, though, that I do feel that th for me, I feel that they're neat, that I just know with like his sense of comedy, mm -hmm. um, I've influenced it a lot in the sense of mm -hmm. like what I feel is great, what I feel is not. Right. And hey, you should check this out. But and, I also, and it could be you teaching yeah. him something about yourself, which is also valuable information. The difference is having that um, sort of wrapped in this expectation of you better like this too. Or, or is that where the shaming lesson? comes in? If yes. I say, okay, got exactly. it. Exactly. What do you it. What do you mean you don't like this? It's brilliant. Yeah. Like. No, okay. no, no. He's allowed not to like it. And, and and I think that to the point about the Adam Sandler films, because that's also really, really important is even when you're watching the, the, the stuff that you're like, oh, you know, I'm not so sure about this, but he seems to really dig it. Every opportunity to help him see the things that he's not, especially with media, because it can just kind of go in with no filter, help him build a filter, help him become aware of those things. You know what I call those moments with parenting is mm. it, they're drop in moments. Like, you know, like, like, you know, when you see the guy jump out of the plane with the parachute, yep. you know, yep. it's like, those are moments that I feel as parents that we get where you're seeing something happen that could be such, um, an opportunity for you to, you know, shed some light on a subject, educate, you know, give them a different perspective and, and really be that parent. Yep. And, but then what ends up happening is, you know, you've gone through the work day, it's the end of the, mm -hmm. whatever, and you're tired and that, that drop in moment passes by. And mm -hmm. I feel like. As I as I go deeper and deeper into it, I I see those moments almost more more frequently because I'm more aware of it. Yep. And and I try to drop into those as much as possible. And there's nothing wrong with if you've had a long day at work and you're exhausted. You know, going back to it, I love drive to school with my girls. That was always when we had the big conversations. And it, coming back and be like, you know, I, I was way too tired to get into it last night, but I noticed you were watching such and such. You were listening to such. And and here here's what I think about that. What do you think? Yeah. Um want to thank you today that was great uh so many different topics i feel like we got to do a show like we just said on mm -hmm. movies yep and how we feel uh about that um just what you said right now conversations with your daughters in cars mm -hmm. gosh it's like the jerry seinfeld comedians <laughs> and coffee in cars like I'm talking to my daughter in a car i got it we got to do a show on that because i can i i cannot spark a conversation in the car really yeah she has straight up said to me, I don't talk in a car. I, ha I have a bit I do on stage <laughs> about her. driving my daughter to school where I, yep. I'm trying to start the conversation. I say to her, hey, you know, she goes, dad, I don't talk in a car. And I was like, it went, I've never even heard that I just want to go before. on the record of saying how much I love that coming from a girl because the tendency would be to be like just, you know, uh, go along with it so that she didn't disappoint you or she wasn't not nice. And Tell me, let's leave with this. As a father... When I'm driving into school, the only thing that can go through my head is I remember my dad used to want to talk to me at seven in the morning and I, I'd be like, dad, I don't want to talk. I'm not fully awake. I'm, yeah. I haven't had three pots of coffee like you have. <laughs> I've been up since 5 a.m. watering all the plants in our house and, and, and showering and, right. uh, and it's, I, dad, it's seven. I just, and I, so now with my daughter, I respect mm -hmm. that she space says. that she says, I don't want to talk in the car yep. and we just listen to really bad pop music. Okay. On that, <laughs> on that note, thank you all for listening. We'll see you guys all next week. I'm Joe Sib. I'm Anaya Bogue. And this is Rad Parenting. Later.